I got my first banjo in 1994 when I was 19 years old. I became inspired to play banjo after watching Pete Seeger in the documentary entitled The Weavers, Wasn't That a Time? What really impacted me about the documentary was discovering the sense of community that can be created through music. And for me, that sense of community was embodied within the banjo. And I wanted to experience that feeling of community in my own life. So I bought various banjo instruction books, started listening to lots of music, and took some banjo lessons. I started performing for senior citizens in assisted living and retirement communities, played music for children at my local community college, and got into the history of the banjo when I met musicians involved with Civil War reenacting. It was also during those formative years in the 1990s that challenged me to look more deeply and more critically at the history of the banjo when I discovered scholarly books and articles that recounted the banjo's provenance through slavery and blackface minstrelsy. I was both affinity struck and challenged to explore how the banjo had the power to bring people together for nurturing community experiences as well as divide people in painful, discriminatory ways. All of these points shaped the way I thought about the music how I played the instrument, and how I would further my own education as a musician, community member, and citizen. In college, I studied classical guitar, in part because I couldn't major in banjo. And everything I learned about technique, repertoire, and methods for analyzing music and music history, I channeled back into the banjo. My focus on the banjo as a research topic was reinforced in 2001 when I became connected with a community of researchers, collectors, musicians, and builders who met at the Five String Banjo Collectors Gathering that year held in Williamsburg, Virginia. I decided that I wanted to balance my interest in being a musician with my interest in primary source material. So in 2004, I earned a library science degree from the University of Maryland, College Park. That allowed me to enter the workforce as part of a community of archivists and librarians. But I stayed connected to the banjo in my non-work hours, doing collaborative research, compiling data about the early banjo, instruments, ephemera, historical images, and was even able to get a National Endowment for the Humanities Digital Humanities Startup Grant in 2009 to help me come up with a work plan for maintaining a database about the early banjo. During that time, I also self-funded two fieldwork trips to West Africa in 2006 and 2008 to study the Jola Ekonting, one of West Africa's many plucked lute traditions that share similarities with the banjo. And back here in the United States, I had the opportunity to study another West African instrument, the Ngoni, as an apprentice to Malian master Ngoni player and griot Sheikh Hamala Jabate through a Maryland State Arts Council Apprenticeship Award. From there, I returned to graduate school once again to complete a second graduate degree, this time in ethnomusicology, which I finished in 2012. All of these experiences together as an archivist, ethnomusicologist, and musician allowed me to return to the workforce as an archivist at the Smithsonian's Center for Folklife and Cultural Heritage, becoming more deeply immersed in the music, traditions, and documentary materials that continue to shape how people think about custom, tradition, and cultural sustainability, both here in the United States and around the world.